I mean, it really is a, it's a community. There was no other community that we wanted to put ourselves behind. And we decided we wanted to get, we didn't know we were getting a community. The little things, the campfires at night. Sitting around the fire. Sharing experiences and stories. If you don't have something, I might have it. Even from the different backgrounds. Conversation. How much you guys have in common because of what we all like to do. Everybody's just accepted for who you are. It doesn't Cooking matter what together. you do. It doesn't matter someone. where you live. The camaraderie. Food and love the outdoors. Those things that bond us together, really. The Kofa National Wildlife Refuge. Over 600,000 acres of rugged desert, beautiful vegetation, sharp mountainous peaks, and blanket-like sloping foothills. Also home to the next stop on the Herd of Turtles adventure. For those that got to camp the night before, breakfast. Pancakes, bacon, and eggs with a friend and an amazing view. The first day at camp is for settling in, for everybody to set up their trailers, tents, enjoy the wildlife, and get to know everybody. That's good. Pockets of conversation were sprinkled around the camp. People finding common interests and sharing stories of life, love, and friendship. Before we knew it, it was time for dinner. As the sun was setting over the hills, it made way for the herd of turtles tradition, the campfire. Sprinkled laughter, the crackling of the fire, set to the tune of Van Morrison's Into the Mystic. What a perfect way to end the night. Or was it? When most people are asleep, the herd explores. On this night, the herd set out to find a little known landmark called Skull Rock. It wasn't hard to see why it got the name Skull Rock. With powerful flashlights handy, the herd climbed the steep, rocky mountain to see what they could find. The trail led straight into a system of caves, which needed deeper investigation. After being satisfied with their find, it was time to head back to camp and take advantage of their modified suspension. The sights firmly set on the adventure that awaits tomorrow, it is time for the herd to call it a night. On day two, the herd went for a trail run. Keith, a longtime herd member, will take us on the adventure. We started at our camp, which is uh, up near Kofa Queen Canyon, and from there we kind of rolled out Palm Canyon, and uh, then we headed up towards the, the north end of the wildlife refuge and uh, we were along the mountain ridge there. Twin Spires is one of them. So we kind of headed out along that way. It was really beautiful because at that point it was raining. Uh, it was a lot of fun, so you don't get to see the desert and the rain very often. So there was some puddle splashing going on, so that was pretty cool. Once we got toward Burrow Canyon, the, the rain was starting to ease up, and the group decided to go ahead and head up Burrow Canyon, which is into the interior of the Kofa which was really cool. I mean, we timed it just absolutely perfectly. As we were heading up Burrow Canyon, you know, the walls were narrowing in, and you know, suddenly the sun's starting to peek out, the rain is stopping, the rocks are shimmering, and uh, I mean, it was just, it was spectacular, just breathtaking. And then uh, headed back down, uh, down Burrow Canyon, regrouped. Uh, there we stopped for lunch. Uh, I had a great lunch, everybody deployed the awnings, and uh, got some shade, because at that point it was nice and bright and sunny. Uh, great lunch, packed up, and then we uh, headed on over to Crystal Hill so the group could floor the, uh, the hill, move in the rocks, looking around, and then uh, ran on back to camp. Like I said, it was about 70 miles. We arrived um, just before dinner, so everybody had enough time to get showered up, cleaned up, and uh, have dinner and a great turtle crawl afterwards. So it was a fantastic day. Although it did rain, it never once dampened the herd's spirit for a great adventure. When they got back, the herd started the Turtle Crawl, where Turtleback trailer owners visit each trailer 
to talk about their experiences, adventures, and interesting stories along the way. Let's take a look. I'll tell you what, when we came up here and we were driving up the last five, six miles, and we're looking at the scenery and the, the mountains and the clouds coming in, uh, we were like, man, you know, if we bought an RV or a trailer, we would never get where we're going today. So we made some modifications. Okay, so this is something that's kind of a work in progress. We're, we made some modifications to the jack stand because we were finding that in the snow it would slip because it's just a smooth surface. So we made like a, two different fittings. One is a spike, like a really thick spike. <laughs> but this will keep you from sliding in the snow. We made nice. that modification, then we made a wheel so that we could roll it around a garage. Nice. Still working. Uh, another mod that I did that I absolutely love is this is a, a water purification sanitation system. And there we noticed uh, when we were doing the herd events that we were some of the very few people who were drinking from the tank. A lot of people were bringing bottled water still. Um, and one of the big reasons that we bought the trailer was because it has 48 gallons of water. Uh, we're in the desert. I want to be able to drink 48 gallons of water um, without like worrying about it. We drank from the tank for a year and a half before I did this. Uh, but you know, if you look, there's a little light that turns on here, and there's a UV sanitizer and carbon filter in there. So I carbon filter the water before it goes in, and then it gets carbon filtered again and UV sanitized, and then it comes out over here. This summer we took a three and a half week trip. Did the Continental Divide. Um, Lived in this all nights except for maybe two nights, um, three, and um, it was awesome. We loved it. It was great. As a matter of fact, um, halfway through the trip, we stayed at a hotel for a couple of nights, and the first night we were there, we woke up the next morning after sleeping in the hotel bed and we're like, God! We're be back, in the, back in the trailer. <laughs> we're just going to pop the trailer in the parking lot and we'll sleep in that for the next night. And just like that, day two had come to a close. It was time for the herd to get some rest for the final day of the trip. Before we knew it, the final day of the adventure was underway. But before they set off, we sat down with a couple of herd members to ask them about the trip and what the herd of turtles gatherings means to them. I think the herd is it's more than just an owner's group. I mean, it really is a it's a community. You know, we all have a lot of common interests. You know, there are folks that come out on the trips with us that, that don't own trailers, but they enjoy being outdoors. They enjoy sharing experiences and stories around the campfire. Uh, we enjoy off-roading. We enjoy exploring on foot. Um, it's just folks with a common mindset uh, that want to go outside, spend time together as a family, spend time together as a group. Everybody knows what each person has had trouble with before and so security is great and just the camaraderie sitting around the fire sharing yeah. stories about each other's you don't realize even from the different backgrounds how much you guys have in common mm -hmm. because of what we all like to do ken and everyone else over at turtleback welcomed us so much last year at the expo not even having the product it was just the community and it was the outgoing support, the knowledge, and you know, the little things, the conversations, meeting people, cooking together at breakfast or lunch or trail runs, whatever it is, hiking together. That's what, that's what drew us to Turtleback. Until the next adventure, and from everyone here at Turtleback Trailers, a friendly reminder to leave no trace behind, always leave camp better than you found it, and to take life outside.